Hello scholars, welcome, Mr. Hinkle here. And today we are talking about ocean acidification. This is one of the consequences of global climate change. That being, since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, humans have been putting excessive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is affecting the climate but it's not only affecting the climate, it's affecting a broad array of other physical, chemical, and biological systems, one of them being within the ocean. And so specifically what we are talking about is the science of ocean acidification and some of its effects to marine life. So this is what we're doing. Introduce the concept, discuss connection between carbon and pH, and then look at the consequences of marine ecosystems. So <clears throat> the definition of ocean acidification is, <clears throat> excuse me, the ocean becomes more acidic. And this is acidic on the pH scale, which I'll introduce here in a moment. Oceans absorb carbon dioxide. This is a natural thing and it's a beautiful thing because Primary productivity in the oceans happens when plants in the ocean use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, sunlight, and water to produce oxygen and energy. Basis of the food web oxygenates about half of our atmosphere. Awesome. Well, along the process, the CO2 dissolves in seawater, it reacts with water molecules, and when there's too much CO2, the reactions that occur will cause a decrease in pH. So when we're thinking about ocean acidification, we're really thinking about the pH balance of the oceans. So the oceans are a natural sink, meaning carbon dioxide enters the oceans. Carbon dioxide is added to the atmosphere through fossil fuels, deforestation, green uh, industrial processes, thereby putting more greenhouse gases, more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere mean more greenhouse gases, more carbon in the ocean. You add something, it's going to change that which it was originally added to. So there are chemical changes in the ocean. The carbonate buffering system, so this is the chemical change. CO2, which is a gas in the atmosphere, is absorbed into the ocean, dissolved gas. It interacts with water to create carbonic acid. Chemical reactions continue to create bi bicarbonate and carbonate, which is useful for different marine organisms to build their shells. The byproduct are hydrogen ions free hydrogen ions in the ocean. So a lot of CO2 gas in the ocean, a lot of hydrogen ions. Well, hydrogen ions are basically pH. pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration. When you have high concentrations of hydrogen ions, you have a low pH and acidic conditions. When you have low concentrations, you have a basic condition, and we call this alkaline. Water is right here at neutral at 7. Our blood is slightly, slightly alkaline. Our cytoplasm is slightly acidic. And then going down the list, coffee is acidic, tomato juice, orange juice, gastric acid, all acidic. Seawater up here is slightly alkaline. Soapy water, bleach, slightly alkaline. Bleach is very alkaline, actually. So, pH is the measure of hydrogen ions. And when we're talking about ocean acidification, we're measuring how many hydrogen ions there are in the ocean. So here's the ocean. And the carbonate buffering system is like this. CO2 in the atmosphere absorbs into the ocean. 
when you add more CO2, right, and then through the carbonate buffering system, we'll say CBS, CBS, okay, you get hydrogen. So more CO2 in the atmosphere, more hydrogen in the ocean, more hydrogen in the ocean, right, high concentrations of hydrogen ions, you get more acidic conditions. So the pH of the oceans decreases with more CO2 that is added into the atmosphere. This is the basic premise of ocean acidification. The science of it says CO2 is absorbed into the oceans. The carbonate buffering system, a series of chemical reactions, creates carbonate for marine life and hydrogen ions. More CO2 in the atmosphere, more hydrogen ions in the ocean, more hydrogen in the oceans, more acidic conditions. And so there's a variability of conditions. The surface is slightly alkaline. Buffering of this, this whole carbonate buffering system, keeps the ocean from becoming too acidic or basic. It kind of keeps the oceans in check. The oceans are big, very big, very vast. And so they can absorb a lot of carbon without much change in the pH, but they are not, the oceans are very resilient, but they are not something that can never be affected. In fact, human activities can affect the oceans. We see this in various um, levels from uh, pollution to marine plastics to overfishing, marine fisheries. The list goes on and on and on to ocean pH. Now, back into climate change just a little bit. This is happening. The chemistry of the ocean is something that we record and that we measure. More carbon in the atmosphere, more hydrogen ions, ocean acidification. And so measurements. Since 1958, the top of Mauna Loa in Hawaii, we have measured atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, and they've been steadily increasing. That's the red line. The blue line is seawater carbon dioxide levels since about 1988. Seawater increasing, I'm sorry, the green, this is green, and the blue is seawater pH. That's been steadily decreasing. So direct measurements show us that the science, this is me understanding and communicating the science of how it works. Here are measurements that are showing that this is actually happening. Excess carbon in the atmosphere leads to excess carbon in the oceans, which decreases the chemistry, uh, the, not the chemistry, but the pH balance of the oceans. So the impacts are far reaching. Marine life, this upsets the balance of marine life being able to uh, build their shells, specifically corals, mollusks, some types of plankton. Um, it impacts their growth, development, and overall structure. So what's being affected by ocean acidification? Marine life, big time. Food chains, it goes down all the way to the base of the food chain. So if phytoplankton aren't able to create their structures, then primary productivity can occur, and we see those effects amplified throughout the food web. Marine food chains, not just the base, but marine life and how they interact on the food chain. The big one is coral bleaching. Corals are keystone species in the marine environment that support entire ecosystems and they are very susceptible, they're sensitive. They're sensitive to temperature and to ocean pH. And when we affect ocean pH and ocean temperature, then the symbiotic relationship between the coral polyp and the zooxanthellae um, no longer is able to exist. The algae that exists in the structure leaves and the polyps can't survive without it because the algae feeds the polyps and that is the structure of the coral reef. See my lecture on coral reefs if you're interested. Fisheries. So marine fisheries are disrupted by pH and 
you know, if we want to make things about us, because we're really good at it as humans, saying, ah, oh, nothing in the ocean matters unless it affects me. Well, everything in the ocean matters because everything in the ocean affects you. But if we're thinking about bottom line in your wallet, then the economic consequences of ocean acidification leads to declines in marine fisheries population, which turns up the price of food for people who are living on land. This also affects jobs and industry and so much more. So that was a short list of how ocean acidification affects the marine environment. It goes on and on and on, but this is an introduction to the concept. Ocean acidification. The ocean absorbs more carbon through chemical reactions, has more hydrogen ions, changing the chemistry, making the oceans more acidic, which in turn causes impacts to marine life, which affects the entire ocean ecosystem that, whether we know it or not, ultimately comes back and affects you and I. So this is a big issue and it's a consequence of climate change and the way that we can help to resolve ocean acidification is to manage the climate crisis right now by stopping using fossil fuels and transitioning to alternative sources of energy. You've got to do it. It's really important. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.